Welcome to the John Gets Games update vlog for April 2024. I'm going to be talking about a few different things today, and I do want to mention that if you prefer to listen to this in podcast form instead of watching it, then you can gain access to that as one of the many exclusive perks you get for supporting this channel through Patreon. You can also access my hundreds of opinion segments talking about all the games that I play, the things I like and don't like about them, and you get to watch some of my videos early and advertisement free. That is at patreon.com slash John Gets Games. Now, at this point, I think I'm going to jump right into the general updates. I have four of them today, and the first of these is uh, kind of time-dependent. Uh, that is the fact that the Golden Geek Award nominations have just gone out on Board Game Geek. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is because there is a Best Board Game Podcast Award, and this is the nomination period. So, essentially, everybody nominates specific podcasts as well as board games from a bunch of different categories, and then, based off of those nominations, they will do an actual vote for, essentially, the best nomination getters. Uh, now, we have a podcast, and by we, I mean the Friendly Ties crew, me, Anastasia, and Nick. Um, we really like making this. In fact, I'm going to talk about uh, releasing another episode later on in this episode. And this is me asking that if you enjoy the Friendly Ties podcast feed, then please nominate it for the best board game podcast. You can find a link to that in the description to help you get right over there. And you should also nominate a bunch of board games as well. It's really cool to um, add these things into the overall system. I certainly did. Next up, I want to briefly mention that I've recorded three more non-sponsored Playthrough with Friends videos. Those tend to come in spurts, and in this case, Anastasia came over and we played three different games, specifically Medina 2nd Edition, Village with the Inn and Port expansions, as well as Concordia, essentially the base game, but we did use the Crete map. I have not done anything for editing these just yet. In fact, I'm not sure when they're even going to go out. They're not going to be talked about in the upcoming schedule, but I am hoping to edit these in between and everything else so that I can get these out to the Patreon supporters as early as possible, potentially seeing it days or even weeks before that goes live. So again, those aren't available just yet, but I just wanted to mention that they're coming because it's a little special and we had a lot of fun filming those videos. Now, the next thing to talk about is <laughs> a little bit of a personal thing. Uh, I had a really bad cough over the last month, and I'm not going to go into the medical details, but I didn't quite realize just how much coughing can get in the way when your job is talking to a camera. Uh, I had several vlogs I was planning on getting out last month, a questions and answers vlog, did not happen once again. Uh, a couple of top 10 lists did not happen. I recorded less last month, obviously, because I was just coughing up a storm. I was coughing so bad that after three solid weeks of coughs, I pulled muscles in my chest, which meant suddenly it was hard to like get up and move around. Man, that was really unfortunate. And this isn't a pity party. It's more just me I don't know, just talking about how physical things can meet with filming schedules. Uh, like, I hope nobody noticed that I was coughing my brains out when I recorded the Horror on the Orient Express video, as well as the Epochs video that I'm going to be talking about in the upcoming schedule. I'm really glad I don't do live videos <laughs> because it just let me cough a whole bunch and then just go right back into recording. So it seems like that is pretty much gone. I've not edited out any coughs here. So thankfully that's going away and hopefully I can get back to a bit of a normal month when it comes to recording and whatnot. Now, the last update I want to say is also kind of a me thing. Well, not really a Jongus Games thing. And that has to do with virtual tabletop. Again, I talked about this one or two months ago, and over the last month, I was able to put out into the public library three different implementations, and I figured I'd talk about it here. So if you have enjoyed playing Spring Cleaning, which is my card game, I put out a modified, updated version of that, so you can play that climbing shedding game up to five players. I also put one out for Pax Penning, which is a brand new game from the same uh, designer publisher as Turncoats. Uh, that's a really fascinating game. I really enjoyed putting that together, and uh, the designer actually sent me the asset so you can see and play it with essentially the actual assets you would use if you uh, were to have a physical copy of that one. I really like it when designers and publishers allow me to have full permission to put these things up. Uh, the third one that I put up is actually a mod for Conagrufen, which I talked about quite a bit in my last Games of the Month episode. Uh, in fact, the reason I put it up is because I talked about it, and I figured people might be curious to check this out. It's the hundreds of year old uh, tarot card game that Jessica and I have been playing a bunch. We played it again just uh, yesterday. <laughs> and uh, so that's also up on the public library. And I'll put links to all of those down below if you want to poke around and see those. Um, I have a few more that are coming out, and I'll probably just keep mentioning those in the uh, general updates because I like to. <laughs> These are essentially my pet project, the thing I do to de-stress in my downtime. 
Anyway, that's it for my general updates, and that means we're going to move into the Shifting Shelf segment. This is where I talk about the games that have left our collection over the last month and the games that have joined our collection. Um, it's not a crazy month, six games leaving and nine games coming in. It's kind of crazy that nine games coming in is, like, typical. <laughs> But anyway, let's go through all these in alphabetical order. Uh, when it comes to the leaving games, the first one is Black Friday. Uh, this is technically the second edition. Uh, this was sent to me essentially primarily so that I could do a sponsored tutorial video for it, and I did. I'd never even heard of that game before it came over here. I filmed that video, and I... <laughs> I never actually got around to playing it, and the reason for that is because I played a different stock market game over the last month or so, and I really bounced off it, and it made me realize I don't think I necessarily love stock market games. I like stocks, but when it um, really has to do with, like, working together with your opponents as opposed to trying to buy uh, low and sell high and screw everybody over. Um, so that made me realize I, I think I'm less incentivized to want to try out Black Friday, and I have so many games to play, so I decided to move that one on. After that, there's Plant Nubo. I bought this one at Essen last year. Uh, I think technically I bought the very first copy. <laughs> like they cracked open the first palette and I bought that copy. Anyway, this is a very complicated Euro with a whole bunch of honestly very cool stuff going on. I played it once at Essen incorrectly and then I played it again like a month-ish ago uh, with Matt. He came over and we played it correctly this time and I talked extensively about my thoughts about that in one of the Patreon exclusive episodes. Uh, but the short version of that is I liked it, but I didn't love it, and I don't really want to teach it again, so I think it's going to move on. My tastes are definitely skewing towards easier to teach, quicker playing games these days, and I think it's likely that uh, Plant and Nubo would just sit on my shelf for years until I finally got rid of it. So I think moving it on now makes sense, so that hopefully somebody who actually likes it enough to <laughs> learn it and teach it gets that game played. After that, we have Summit, and honestly, this is a very similar uh, story to Black Friday. Uh, frequently in these Shifting Shelf segments, I talk about games that I got to make sponsored videos that I don't specifically um, enjoy from my personal taste perspective. Uh, Summit is one of those. Uh, that was sent to me with some expansions. I did a sponsored video for that. It's like a racing game up the mountain. You can play competitively. You, you can also play cooperatively, and I don't generally play cooperative games, and that was the style of video that I put up there, and there's some neat stuff going on with, like, assembling your ropes as you make your way up the summit, but again, with so many games to play, this one didn't really capture my specific personal desires to have this one hit the table. So again, it makes sense to move that one on to somebody who will get that game played. Uh, finally, there is Terra Paramedes. I paid a lot of money for this game. It's a new Kramer and Kiesling game. It has not had a U.S. distribution just yet, and something about it just really compelled me. I saw some photos, and you, like, stack uh, tiles on top of tiles with these little wooden components, and there's icons everywhere, and you're putting tiles down onto a board, and I just saw it, and I knew I instantly had to have it, and I paid a bunch of money to have it imported, and then I played it twice and was pretty disappointed. <laughs> uh, I really wanted to love this game, and uh, it, it actually comes with three expansions in the box, or maybe two expansions. Um, essentially ways to make the game more complicated. The first time I played was with none of those. The second time it was with one of those. And I just wasn't interested in coming back to it again. It's not really, really the kind of game I'm looking for. It's not particularly mean. It's highly tactical. So it's like you're making decisions when it's your turn, not necessarily when it's not your turn. I don't know. It just did not click with me, which is unfortunate because it's a gorgeous game. But uh, fortunately, I've actually already moved that one on. So hopefully the person who has picked that one up is enjoying it because it is a wonderful production. I just don't think it was the game that I was hoping it would be. Now when it comes to the games that are arriving, there is Age of Comics. This I got because I'm going to be doing a sponsored tutorial. In fact, uh, just about an hour ago, I finished learning it. It's currently set up on my kitchen table, so I know how that game plays. It's uh, kind of a worker placement game about uh, making comic books in Manhattan. Uh, there's some... Uh, kind of set collection things going on. You're you're trying to assemble your writers and your artists and all that stuff. Uh, it looks pretty neat. I'm looking forward to filming that, and I'm probably going to get that one to the table in the next day or two. Um, after that, there is Ancient Knowledge. This was sent to me as a press copy, and I actually got to play this one twice at Board Game Geek Con last year. Um, the second time, obviously, because I enjoyed the first time quite a bit. The first time I played it was two players, the second time was three, and the third time I played it was two players, and that was with this copy, again, that was sent to me as a press copy. I think this is a really fun game at two players, but I don't really see myself playing it with a whole bunch more. So I'm glad I have it right now, and I'd like to show this to some more people because it's got some really cool combos and stuff. I'm just not sure its longevity overall in our collection. Um, after that, there is Asara. This game 
was a little bit of a bummer. So it came out like 10 years ago. I'd never heard of it before until just a month or two ago. And several people told me it was like trick-taking the Euro game. So you have a board and you have a hand of cards with colors. And once you put like a blue card down into one section of the board, only blue cards can go over there. So it's kind of like must follow in a way. Um, but I played this game once and I want to give it a try again. I wasn't necessarily blown away with it. It's it's a very light game, maybe lighter than I was expecting. This isn't supposed to be a review, but <laughs> uh, I have been playing a lot of the games that have been coming in, which is good. After that, there is a game that I've not played yet. It's City Tricks. Uh, it's my understanding that like a couple dozen copies of this game exist. It was kind of like a, a pre-release version of this trick-taking 18xx hybrid style game. And I was fortunate to be one of the people that they wanted to send a copy to. I think that's because I really like trick-taking games and I really like train games. And I have opened this one up. It's got some really great uh, cards. Like the, the production quality on it is, is surprisingly good for like essentially a pre-production sort of game. And I've not played it just yet. This is one that I'm not going to just bring to a random game night and try to convince people to play. I need to set something up get people over here, not because it's going to be like hours and hours long, but just because it's kind of a very specific taste sort of thing. And I, I want to teach it to people who are actively interested in giving it a shot. So I'm hoping to make that happen soon. I, I was, you know, once again, sent a copy of this one and I, I really want to get it to the table because of that. After that, there is Hansa. This game was given to me by Anastasia. So thank you, Anastasia. Uh, she bought this one for very cheap. I think back uh, when the Board Game Geek market was doing a test of a new version and there was a whole bunch of people selling games for really cheap for a while. She got a copy of this game. It came out a long time ago. It's a Michael Schott game. And I actually played this one once at Board Game Geek Con last year and I really liked it. And I told her that and she was like, cool, I'm going to give you my copy. <laughs> So she did. It's here in our collection. I've only played it once again and actually played it online that time. The first time I played was four players and I really liked it. The second time I played was two players and it did not grab me very much. So I am hoping to get this one played again. It feels like for me, I'm going to enjoy it with more players, which seems like it's counter to what a lot of people say on Board Game Geek, but whatever. I like having more people around the table, it seems. Uh, I didn't mention what it's like. Uh, it's, it's a very tactical game. There is a single ship that's moving all around the... Uh, I guess, Scandinavia, general area. Um, and when it's your turn, you move it and you're essentially trying to get things and sell things and then move the ship into a position that's hopefully bad for your opponents so that it's hard for them to move it into a situation that you like. I don't know, something about it just really grabbed me and I'm looking forward to giving it another go. It's also a very skinny box, so it's super easy to fit into the collection. After that, there is In Too Deep. This one was sent to me as a press copy from the publisher, and this is a new game. There's a couple In Too Deeps on Board Game Geek. This is the 2024 one that is a card game, but it, not like trick-taking or anything like that. It's a game that is cards, and it's all about investing stocks into shipping companies and then also activating those shipping companies to have them do stuff. I played this one once. It was four players, I'm pretty sure, and I quite liked it. It was odd. It was much more odd than I was expecting going in, and I don't mean that as a bad thing. It was more like about a third to halfway through the game, I was like, okay, I get what I'm supposed to be doing, and I'm not doing that, so I'm probably not going to do very well. But it left me really curious to try that one again. Um, it has a very high-level take on shared incentives. There's, like, no dilution or anything like that, but it uses cards as currency, and it's got some really smart ideas. I'm actually really hopeful for very much enjoying this one in the future. Uh, I definitely want to get it to the table again. Um, after that, there is Laminge, which is a game that I'm super happy I was able to get a copy of. I talked effusively about this one on the exclusive uh, uh, Opinions episode that I put out to the Patreon supporters. This is a almost 10-year-old game. It was designed by Sebastian Bleasdale, and it's a race game. You're trying to get your two lemmings around the track and then jump them off a cliff first. And I've played this one three times now, twice online and once in person with the copy that I was able to get. And this game is so good. It is like easily my favorite race game. I don't really play race games that much, but man, this game is so smart. It's got a card play mechanic for moving around that um, incentivizes you to do things that help other people out, but it's a fully competitive game. I've just been super impressed with this game, and I'm excited to have a copy because it is very hard to get a copy of this game. Uh, I actually had to essentially ping people who had a copy to get this. I wasn't able to just like buy it from a specific market. I I'm never going to be getting rid of this one. Uh, after that, there is Pueblo. This is a new version. I backed this one on Kickstarter. I haven't actually played it before. I don't really remember backing it on Kickstarter, but I did. And it looks like it has a compelling uh, idea behind it. I read the rules. They're very simple. You're putting these three-dimensional sort of polyomino shapes into a stacked 
um, <laughs> I guess, Pueblo in the middle of the table. Uh, they're wooden shapes. And it's all about, I guess, hiding your colors, but you have to put your colors out. And then a, a person walks around the outside, and every time they see your color, you get negative points or positive points, but you don't want points, something like that. It seems really straightforward to play. I just haven't actually done it. That is one I definitely should put in my bag when I go to a, a game night with people that I don't necessarily know. Finally, there is Twisty Tracks. So <laughs> this is a game that I've sort of had for a while. Uh, I bought the original version of this. It was only released in Poland uh, as Jedzia, uh, a very long name. And a couple of months ago, I said I was removing it from the collection because I wanted to get a copy of Twisty Tracks, which is essentially the English US printing of the game. But there's also a rules change, which I believe makes the game a little bit meaner, a little bit tighter than the very family weight game that it was uh, when it was published in Poland. So I was able to get a copy of it now. I have Twisty Tracks here. I haven't been able to play it just yet. It's a tiling game where you're trying to move your own trains around. It's one of those, everybody draws a tile and then you all simultaneously play it. Although you don't play the same tile down and you're just trying to make loop-de-dupes and you're trying to make your train loop as many times as possible. I just find those kind of things really aesthetically pleasing. Something about that game I just really like. So I have Twisty Tracks, the English version of it now, and hopefully I get to play that one soon. Anyway, that is the Shifting Shelf. Those are all the new games that have arrived, and that means we've reached the last segment of this update vlog. I'm going to talk about the upcoming schedule for the next four weeks. Looking at next week, which is week 16, the first video coming out is a new Friendly Ties podcast. So it's more of a podcast, but of course I put a video version out with, you know, images of the game and whatnot that you can watch. Uh, a surprising number of people watch it through the video form. Uh, and this one, we're not actually sure what the actual title is going to be, but it's essentially a Wormspan versus Wingspan comparison episode. It was really fun to record this one um, after playing Wormspan a couple of times and then, you know, comparing it to Wingspan that's been played so many times. We had a really good discussion about that one, and that should be going out next Tuesday. Um, then also next week, I'm going to be putting out my best of uh, lists. So I mentioned in the general updates that I really struggled with a cough that made it really hard to do recording in general, but specifically the vlog type thing. But I was able to squeeze in this top 10 list, which I talked about last month. I thought I was going to get a top 10 22 games and a top 10 23 games in. I was able to record the 22. And in fact, I edited that one and I sent it out to the Patreon supporters like a week and a half ago. Uh, so quite a while ago, there's already a bunch of views on that one. It's really cool to see just how many of the supporters of the channel got to see that one early without any advertisements or anything. Anyway, that one is going to go public next week. Uh, and it was interesting to delve into a bunch of games from just a couple of years ago because I never made a top list for 22. And I actually talk about 20 games. <laughs> I do two simultaneous top 10 lists, which is pretty interesting. Uh, that one went well, and I'm hoping to record the top 10, I guess, top 20-ish games from 2023 soon. Um, spoilers, I'm not going to talk about that for the rest of this uh, upcoming schedule. It looks like that'll hopefully happen in May. Uh, I've got a lot of projects coming in and essentially push that one further and further out. Anyway, looking to the following week, that's week 17, I'll be putting out a sponsored tutorial for Age of Comics, which I talked about briefly in the uh, Shifting Shelf. I'm also going to be putting out a introduction video and a separate tutorial video for The Sixth Realm. Uh, this is a game I have a pro type four. It's a new one coming out from Final Frontier Games. They're going to be doing a Kickstarter campaign for it, so they're both going to be sponsored. And I actually wrote the rulebook for this game. Uh, that's happened a couple times, where I record a tutorial video after I wrote the rulebook. And <laughs> a couple of times it's happened in the past, I've been like, this doesn't make sense. I wrote this. I should have done a better job. So we'll see if that happens to me with this one. Um, then, hypothetically, I'd like to record a questions and answers vlog. It's been months. Every update vlog I say I want to, and then I keep not doing it. I think I had a pretty good excuse for not doing it last month. I really want to try and work that one in here. We'll see if I'm able to do it. If I do, then I'll send out a, a thing to the Jongus Game subscription feed a few days beforehand so that people can see it. And then I'll put an edited version out probably the following week. Um, I really hope to make that happen, but no promises. <laughs> Uh, then in week 18, I have Epochs. Uh, this is a game that I very briefly mentioned earlier on. It's a pretty expansive, but also somewhat streamlined 4X game coming out from Ice Makes Games. I haven't seen a game this big from them in the past. This is a sponsored video. I've done several sponsored videos for them in the past, but um, it's got some really neat ideas. And in particular, you play through different epochs and you are frequently putting down invention cards that are free, that give you bonuses and to give your opponents bonuses, that give you ongoing benefits. There's a lot of that kind of thing in the game. I was pretty impressed by what I saw. After that, in that same week, I'm planning on doing my Games of the Month vlog for April. Um, that is essentially me finding the best one or two gaming experiences from the month, and I bundle up 
the normally exclusive audio that I put out for those opinions episodes, and I put that out for everyone to see as I glowingly generally talk about the best gaming moments that I had over the last month. I have no idea what that's going to be, because that's going to be in a few weeks. Uh, finally, looking to week 19, four weeks ahead, I'm planning on doing an update vlog. That one will be for May. Also, I'm going to be putting out a sponsored tutorial video for Stupor Monday. This is a game that I have the prototype for already. It's coming out from Quinted Games. I think it's going to a Kickstarter or something like that. Um, it's been up on Board Game Arena for a while. And in fact, I played it on Board Game Arena and talked about it in one of my exclusive opinions episodes a few months ago. And I really like the look of the game. I really like a lot of elements to it. So I'm looking forward to getting it on the table and filming that tutorial. Finally, in that week, I'm planning on doing a sponsored tutorial for Trail Story America, which is a new release coming out from WizKids Games. I don't know much about it <laughs> besides you're doing, uh, you're kind of trekking across America. So I'll learn more about that when it arrives. I think it's in transit to me right now. And that's essentially a possible look at the videos that I'm planning on putting out over the next four or so weeks. That is 10-ish videos. It's quite a bit for four weeks, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Fortunately, I've already finished up the best of video for 2022, so that should help things out. And Epochs is just about done as well. So that helps me get a little bit ahead. Anyway, these things might change, of course, but hopefully they don't. And I hope you are interested in at least some of these videos and checking those out. Uh, all right, that is going to bring this update vlog to a close. Somewhat shorter one in general. I, I felt kind of silly talking about my coding projects for virtual tabletop, but I don't know. It's there's something interesting about having people enjoy using something that you make. Like I make these mods on virtual tabletop and I can keep them private and just play them with my friends. And there's a joy there, but there is an extra joy for some reason of putting it out there so that people I don't even know can give it a shot. Um, I, I put one out a few months ago and every now and then I see a comment that somebody says they played it and it was really good. Uh, one for Steam Power, actually. I've seen a lot of comments. People liked playing it there. And that just makes me feel all warm inside. So anyway, that was a bit of a tangent and that's going to bring this vlog to a close. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos just like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.